whenever a tissue suffers ischemia loss of blood supply what is expected uh, in the short term maybe there is a functional loss or maybe there is a structural damage possible and if the blood flow is restored what can be expected that the function may return to normal the structural damage may be contained well in the case of myocardium when the blood perfusion is restored there is something called as reperfusion injury that the injury that was uh, sustained because of the ischemia when the blood supply returns they, when there is reperfusion this injury gets further exaggerated this has been termed as reperfusion injury so let's try to understand why there is this reperfusion injury to the myocardium first thing that needs to be understood clearly is that whenever there is ischemia in the case of myocardium or in the case of any other tissue myocardial ischemia in this case will result in failure of sodium potassium pump first uh, function to be hit is that of the sodium potassium pump whether it is hypoxia ischemia so there would be failure of the sodium potassium pump now we can recall that all the secondary active transports are critically dependent on the activity of the sodium potassium pump this is a primary active transport absolutely necessary for the functioning of the carriers in secondary active transport so if the sodium potassium pump fails that means the result would be failure of the secondary active transports now in this case a uh, myocardium has the secondary active transporter by the name ncx sodium calcium exchanger it was something like this sodium potassium pump was throwing the sodium out of the cell creating the concentration gradient for sodium and then this secondary active transporter the ncx would cause the sodium to come in and take the calcium out of the cell calcium is taken out by this ncx now if the sodium potassium pump fails and because of that the ncx sodium calcium exchanger the secondary active transporter also fails after myocardial ischemia the result is accumulation of calcium in the intracellular fluid in the myocardial fiber we will do well to recall that the strength of contraction of any muscle depends upon or it's proportional to the amount of calcium present in the fiber whether it's skeletal muscle or cardiac muscle so increased amount of intrasarcoplasmic or intracytoplasmic calcium means there is a possibility of a stronger contraction so watch this when the blood flow is restored to this part of the myocardium and therefore um, nutrients and oxygen uh, is restored the supply is restored this fiber is going to contract this fiber will now contract much much stronger very strongly because of a high level of intracellular calcium in uh, sarcoplasmic calcium already the fiber was friable and weak the strong contraction that follows will cause further damage so perfusion getting re established the reperfusion should have done th something good but instead it has caused a further damage because of this accumulation of calcium and therefore in summary reperfusion injury the pathophysiology is high icf calcium results in the further damage this damage is further exaggerated further accentuated by the oxygen uh, free radicals so that's the pathophysiology of reperfusion injury